Hi, this is Halal. In this video on Mathematical Economics series, we will solve a problem that was asked by a friend on the YouTube. The question is like this. For a demand function that is given as P is equal to 1800 minus 0.6 Q square, we are being given an inverse demand function where P is the price and Q is the quantity. We are being told to calculate the total revenue and marginal revenue when the quantity produced is equal to 10 and also calculate the consumer surplus at Q is equal to 10. Okay, so first we will uh, try to uh, form the total revenue function to get the total revenue. So we are given the P is equal to 1800 minus 0.Q square. Okay, this is our inverse demand function. Now total revenue as we know is simply total revenue is equal to price times quantity so we have to do nothing we have to just uh, multiply our inverse uh, demand function with q so we have 1800 1800 minus 0.6 q square and to this we multiply q to get the total revenue now this is 1800 minus uh, sorry it is 1800 q 1800 q minus 0.6 now q square into q is equal to q q so i will write here Q, Q. This is our total revenue. Okay. Now total revenue, total revenue when Q is equal to 10 is simply we just insert the value of Q in the total revenue function to get the total revenue. Okay. So we have 1800 here in place of Q is equal to 10. So in place of Q, I will write 10 minus 0.6 in place of Q, I will write 10 Q. Okay. Then solving this will come out to be 18,000 minus 0.6. 0 0.6 into uh, 10 cubes is equal to 1000. So I will write here 1000. So this is 18,000 minus 0 0.6 into 1000 is equal to 600. So I will write here 600. Now when subtracting 600 from 18,000, what will we get? 0, 0, 4, 7, 1. So total revenue when Q is equal to 10 is equal to 17,400 okay this is our total revenue now calculating the second part that's marginal revenue at q is equal to 10 now what is marginal revenue marginal revenue is simply the derivative of total revenue function with respect to quantity what is our total revenue this is our total revenue function and we take its derivative with respect to q okay so the derivative of q as i have told you so many times the derivative of q is 1 here so I will write here 1800 only minus derivative of q cube is 3 q square. Okay, it, if it is q cube, its uh, derivative is this 3 becomes quotient and this uh, exponent is subtracted by 1. So we get uh, 3 minus 1, which comes out to be 3 q square. Okay, so in place of q cube, I will write 3 q square and it is multiplied with 0 0.6. So I will write 0 0.6 into uh, Q square which comes out to be 1800 minus now 0.6 into 3 so it is 6 by 10 into into 3 so 3 6 is our 18 divided by 10 which comes out to be 1.8 or I will write here 18 divided by 10 Q square okay now, what is marginal uh, revenue when Q is equal to 10? Just insert the value of Q uh, in the marginal revenue function, which is this very. We have 1800 minus, we have 18 divided by 10. Now, Q square in place of Q square, I will write 10 square. So, this comes out to be 1800 minus 18 divided by 10 into this gets cancelled with this so we are left with this this becomes 1 as 0 so we have 1800 minus 180 now what is 1800 when we subtract 180 from this 0 10 minus 8 is 2 now we have 7 minus 1 is 6 so we are left with 1620 okay i am not sure about the calculations uh, so this is our marginal revenue when q is equal to 10 okay this was the part first of the problem
Now coming to the second part, calculating the con consumer surplus. Okay. So, what is actually consumer surplus? Uh, if I can uh, draw the graph here, consumer surplus is simply if I draw a graph, if we have quantity here, we have price here. This is our demand function. Let us say this is our equilibrium price here. This is equilibrium quantity here. Okay. Consumer surplus is the difference between the price that the consumers are willing to pay and the price they actually pay. The difference between those two prices gives us the consumer surplus. And graphically, it simply means the area which is below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price. That means this very right angle triangle is the consumer surplus. We have to find this very right angle triangle. It is area. Okay. Now, how do we find consumer surplus? Is simply consumer surplus is given by the integral, definite integral from zero to equilibrium quantity uh, times P dQ minus P into Q. Okay. So this is. Uh, this is the formula for finding the consumer surplus okay this part shows the consumers the price that they are willing to pay and this is the price or uh, revenue that they actually uh, give okay so what is this this simply means we have to integrate the demand function with respect to quantity okay and take the different definite integral from zero to equilibrium quantity okay now what is our equilibrium quantity our Q is 10, which we have calculated here. So what will we write? We will simply write the different integral from 0 to uh, Q is given us here. So the definite integral from 0 to Q, so we have in place of Q 10, and taking the demand function that is 1 at 0, 0, minus 0 0.6 Q square, okay? We have to integrate this very demand function with respect to quantity obviously minus and from this we have to subtract the total revenue this is p into q okay i hope i am making sense here now how do we integrate uh, as we know the integration is simply the reciprocal of the differentiation or what will we do here now if i have space here i will write here we have uh, the dairy, uh, sorry, the integral of 1800 is 1800 Q, 1800 Q, and the integral of Q square is, the integral of Q square is simply Q 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. It is actually the uh, reverse of the integration. Here we add exponent by 1 and divide the resulting exponent. In case of, if we have to find the uh, derivative of let us say qq what we do we take this three parameter coefficient and subtract the exponent by one so it is simply the reverse process of the integration uh, that is the differentiation so the derivative of 1800 uh, the derivative of 1800 is q okay uh, minus now the derivative of q square as i have told you this is q cube divided by three so i will write 0 0.6 Q cube divided by 3 and we have the integral from 0 to 10 okay from this we subtract the total expenditure P into Q actually gives us the total expenditure okay what is our total expenditure so we have price uh, our price is uh, have we calculated the price I guess I have not calculated the price, so we will uh, calculate the price. So let me rub this out. So, since Q is given, we just put Q is equal to 10 in our inverse demand function to get the value of P. Okay, so P would be equal to P is equal to 1800 minus 0 0.Q, sorry, 0 0.6 Q square, that is 10 square. Okay. 10 square so this comes out to be 1800 minus 0 0.6 into 100 this comes out to be 1800 minus uh, point uh, this is 60 and this comes out to be what it comes out to be 
if we uh, 0 minus 0 is 0, 10 minus 6 is 4, we have 7, actually it is 1740. So in place of P, I will write 1740 into uh, what is Q? Q is 10. So actually we got this very because we have actually calculated the total revenue which is price into quantity. So just for the sake of simplicity, I have told you how to find the P value also. Okay. Now, when we solve this comes out to be, let me uh, take this uh, stride to this uh, type. Now we have 1800 Q. How do we evaluate the integral? We just uh, first uh, we evaluate the integral at our upper limit and then we subtract the resulting uh, integral and evaluate it upper uh, sorry lower limit. So we have 1800 1800 Q in place of Q we have 10. First we evaluate it at the upper limit minus now 0.6 uh, divided by 3 is 0 0.2 I will write first to this and we have Q Q here. So I will write in place of this 10 Q okay. So first we evaluate the definite integral at the upper limit and from that from there we uh, so we evaluate it at lower limit now 1800 into in place of q now we have 0 so 1800 into 0 is 0 similarly here it is uh, 0 so a whole term will become 0 so here it is 0 we will not write that very part and we have this very total expenditure that is 1740 okay now this is 18000 simply minus we have 0 0.2 into 10 cubed is 1000 minus 1740. Now, this is 18,000. 18,000. Uh, 0.2 of uh, 1000 is actually 200. So I will write here 200 minus 1740. Now, what is this? Uh, if we uh, subtract, this is 2, uh, 0. We have here 0. Now 10 minus 2 is 8. Uh, 10 minus 2 is 8. We have here 7, 1. And to this we subtract 1, 7, 4, 0. Now what will come out to be? 0 minus 0 is 0. Uh, 0. <laughs> 10 minus 4 is 6. 0 minus 0 is 0. Uh, 0 uh, 10 minus 4 is 6. And 7 minus Am I doing the right calculation? As I told you, it gets some times messy. So we have here 7 minus 7 is 0. 7 minus 7 is 0. Actually, we got the total consumer surplus is 60. I am not sure about the calculation. You can check out what is this very term. So what is our consumer surplus? It is simply, if I add this, if I write it properly here, and draw the graph consumer surplus is simply if we draw the graph here we have quantity here we have the price this was our demand function and it was not a linear one our inverse dem demand function is quadratic so it will not be a straight line let me draw it like this let us say this is our demand function which is 1800 minus 0 0.6 Q square okay this was our demand function and what was our equilibrium price equilibrium price which we calculated uh, was actually somewhere I have written I this is our equilibrium price this is P so equilibrium price is 1740 what is equilibrium quantity it is 10 now consumer surplus is simply the area which lies below the demand curve and and above the equilibrium price that means this is our demand curve so the area of this very uh, this very uh, closed figure gives us the consumer surplus okay i hope i make myself clear i was not able to uh, teach you everything about the integration integration rather i have actually made uh, another uh, another playlist for the integration in economics where you can easily understand what we mean by the integration and all the stuff about the mathematical economics i am updating uh, consistently so i will 
like you people to share and subscribe this video so that I get some sort of inspiration to make more stuff. As you know, the viewership on this channel is absolutely pathetic, I would say. But still, uh, there are some friends uh, which inspire me to make more videos like I have uh, sister Hina Thakur, I guess, you know, uh, that is Anit Baharo, Bharat Vajir, Sajad Pareez, and other persons I am not able to uh, recall all the names but those people inspire me to make more videos okay so it's all free for you if you can just uh, share and subscribe this video I will really appreciate that thank you I have made a small error in calculating the consumer surplus I have not um, multiplied the quantity to the price here in case of the total expenditure which we got so it will come out to be 18,000 minus 0 0.2 into 10 cube is 1000 minus 1740 into 10 is 17400 so there was actually the mistake I have written only 1740 so this will come out to be 1800 minus now 0.2 of 1000 is 200 simply minus 17400 and which uh, comes out to be 0 minus 0 is 0 uh, we have again 0 then 10 minus 2 is 8 we get uh, 10 minus 2 is 8 so what we are left here we are left with uh, 7 17800 minus 17400 which comes out to be 400 actually the consumer surplus is 400 and I have told you it is simply the area which is below the demand curve and the above, above the equilibrium price this gives us the consumer surplus sorry for the mistake thank you